Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to paint three different types of trees. We're gonna cover the round shaped tree, a spreading tree, and an oval tree. So if you're ready to learn these types of shapes of trees and to paint them with me, then let's dive in. It's time to paint some trees. I'm gonna be using my size six round heritage 4050 brush the entire time. We're gonna practice a few different techniques. If you've been watching any of my videos on my channel for the past couple of years, you will know that I love to break down everything that I paint, draw, whatever, down to basic shapes first, and then I paint it. So you can sketch out these tree shapes beforehand. Like I have a little reference, mainly just for placement to make sure I don't run out of paper. So I sketched mine out before, but I'm gonna talk about each individual tree and its basic shape before I paint it. So the first one we're gonna paint is a round shaped tree. So something like a walnut tree. Um, and to basically to sketch this round tree, I'm going to start with a ball for the top or a circle for the top, and then two circles on the bottom trying to get them to be about the same size, but these circles are gonna direct the shadow on my tree. So at the bottom, same side of each one of these circles is where I'm gonna sh add, add in darker green for the leaves. So we have, once we start painting it in, you know, the natural brush strokes, I'm gonna use some dry brush effect to get this uh, you know, more rough outer edge of the tree. And then we have our trunk. Like so. So you can sketch these balls out if you want to, these three circles, if you want to as a guide, not necessary. So this is our round tree, maybe a maple. Um, I have it down here for reference against, just so I make sure to fit all 10 on here. So I'm gonna grab my size six brush. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna work from light to dark to basically cover the entire leafy area of the tree with a lighter green and then add in our darker shadows under those three curves where those three, three circles are. So I'm grabbing sap green and a touch of lemon yellow deep, and I'm going to add a lot of water to it. And I'm going to dab my brush on my paper towel before I go to my paper, because I want a dry brush effect for the outer edge, especially the outer edge of the tree. So as you can see, I'm kind of doing this like circular motion, like if you were to be brushing your teeth and just kind of scrubbing is what it's called. Need a little bit more pigment. Scrubbing around the edge and then I might grab water and bring that in. So just with the first value we're putting down of the very light green, we are already starting to see this really nice texture and it looks, you know, you're barely doing anything and it's already looking really nice. So I'm kind of spreading the hair of the brush and moving it around and dipping in my pigment every once in a while. And if it's looking too fluid, then I'm just dabbing off on my paper towel, and scrubbing and scratching around. And if you're worried about damaging your brush, don't worry. If you have a really nice brush like these heritage brushes, you won't damage it. Um, just make sure when you're done using the brush, you get water and you clean the brush and just kind of form the brush back to its tip. So while this is still a little bit wet, I'm gonna go in with a slightly darker value. So just adding more pigment to make it more opaque. And we're gonna start to add in some color around these curves. A little bit lighter than that, so I'm gonna grab water and blend that in. So with this mid-tone value of green, I'm gonna go up a little bit 
more on the circles than I will with the darkest green. That darkest green is just gonna hug that line on each circle on the bottom right. You could do the bottom left. Just think about where your light source is coming in. So for this, it would be coming in over here. So this is the, where the shadow is. Maybe coming out on the edge a little bit and scrubbing it around a little bit more. And now we are ready for our darkest green. Grabbing a little more sap green and lemon yellow deep for my most opaque version of this green. I'm just gonna lightly dapple. Is that a technical term? Dapple? Um, the shadow that, you know, leaves cast on the ground through with the light peeking through is called dappled light. So I'm just using that term. Learn something new every day, folks. But I don't think it's like a painting term. Oh. It might be. Mm. So I'm adding in the dark color. I'm just using the side of my size six brush and dancing around that bottom curve. I don't want to accentuate these circles too much make it look like three balls sitting there. So I might come up here and darken just a little line. So it kind of makes it more irregular. Then we got that dry brush. a good looking tree so far. Thanks. So I'm grabbing with just a tiniest bit of water so that my brush is mostly pigment and it's really dry um, to give that texture when I add it. We've got our shadow on this side, a little bit darker. I'm gonna mix up some burnt umber with a touch of Mars Black. I'm gonna start light. So I'm adding a lot of water and making sure to dab the excess water off on the paper towel. I'm just gonna use a 25-ish degree angle away from the paper. So a slanted hold with my brush. I'm just going to like grab more paint first, <laughs> flick it down like so, and use the tip of the brush to add in these little branches just here and there. Kind of make it wobbly. And then a darker version of that brown, so a lot more burnt umber for a thicker, more opaque. And I'm gonna go in and darken some of this. And if you want, you can grab just water on your brush and snag the base of that tree while it's still wet for a little shadow.
There you go, first tree. Done. In the bag, as they say. Great start to the tutorial, I gotta say. John's excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but you see how like I've got three quarters of this tree on the right side is in shadow. Our light source is over here, but we definitely are accentuating these curves on the round parts or the three circles that we have of this round shaped tree or a walnut tree. Oops, I said maple, but it's actually a walnut tree. Maybe it's also a maple, who knows? Maples are a little bit more open. Okay, moving on. Our next tree is going to be very similar to this one, but it's a spreading tree. So we're gonna elongate our circle shapes a little bit more for oval shapes. And our trunk is gonna be a lot shorter and maybe a little bit fatter. So, so maybe something like a mulberry tree, we're gonna have a short and fat trunk, something like this and it's spreading, so we've got some branches kind of coming off like this. But then we have three-ish ovals instead of circles. So it's flatter and wider, and I'm kind of running into this tree, but you get the point. And then that is gonna be our outline for the tree. We've got it like this, kind of like the tree that Rafiki's in, in Lion King. And it's spreading. So we've got some long branches coming out over here. And then same thing, same idea, wherever our light source is, we're shading the first point away from that light source on those three shapes. All right, so same exact thing for the round tree we're gonna do for the spreading tree. I'm gonna use a slightly darker green this time, a smokier, darker, sap green with Mars black, and maybe a touch of burnt umber for like a smoky green. Getting it to, whoops, the right color first. And then I'm gonna grab that color on my brush and lighten it in my water cup. Maybe a touch of blue to bring it back to a little bit more vivid instead of so gray. So I've got that tone or that color on my brush and I'm just gonna lighten the value of it by swashing around in my water cup and then I'm gonna dab off the excess. So we start with our light value first and then we get darker. And I'm scrubbing around that tree with this light value, maybe leaving some gaps here and there where I can put some branches for this one to be a little different. So I'm really pushing and scrubbing that around and making sure it's spreading. Then I'll grab some more of that pigment or my mid-tone. While that's still wet, I'll plug that in. And for these dappily texture shapes, I'm actually gonna drag it across, not in a totally straight line, but more straight across and wider shapes for these leaves, just to give it that sweeping, spreading effect. This dark value right here is too much contrast against these leaves, so I'm gonna blend it in a little bit more, grab water on my brush and just kind of bring that up. So we're really starting to see those parts spread. And I'm just gonna go in with a really dark green value and add in some contrast, some shadow.
roll it around. Okay, now for the trunk, same thing, burnt umber, Mars black, lighter value first, and this is a wider trunk, so I'm going to start on the left edge here and just bring it. not overdoing these branches. I'm leaving random gaps of white space through them, especially in the trunk. It's kind of like just sketching with my paintbrush. And then a darker version to accentuate this Don't have room to do a full shadow on this tree, so, because we've got other trees below it. But there you go. Same thing with this darker color on my trunk. I'm making sure to choose the same side, but I'm not overthinking it too much. Just giving it a little bit of pop. It helps if you, do, you know, blur your vision a little bit and look at how the shape, if you can still see a tree shape when you blur your vision when you're looking at this, then you're on the right track. Next up, we're gonna do an oval shape. Um, this could be something like a downy birch tree. So you're literally gonna start with, if you need help with visualizing the shape, you're gonna start with an oval an oval shape, and that's about it. You've got your leaves, your trunk, and it's just your average simple oval shape. Makes it a lot easier when you visualize the basic shape first. And same thing, we're gonna do a birch tree down here that is an autumn so yellows and golds and maybe oranges. Um, so we're gonna do a green up here. So I'm gonna grab a light wash of yellow green. Make sure to soak up excess water on my paper towel first to get that dry brush effect. So scrub a dub dub and follow that. Follow that oval shape. With that texture of your paper poking through. The rougher your paper, the more texture you're gonna get. So if you are working on rough paper, you're probably gonna have even more texture than I have here. This is cold press paper. Um, there's hot press paper. You're probably not gonna get enough texture if you're working on hot press paper, which is smoother. So I've got my oval shape down with my light green, then I'm gonna grab, touch more of that pigment so it gets more opaque, and I'm gonna go in and add that darker value on this side. and then even darker value. Can I make a comment? Mm-hmm. 
I think with a lot of paintings, you make it look easy, but these trees, you're especially making it look easy, but the trees are coming out looking really awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that normal? Like, uh, what's our viewer going to be thinking right now? I mean, I am probably making them look a little bit easier than they will be from people who are, who have never painted a tree like this. So if you're like, not super familiar with painting trees, make sure you have patience with yourself, but these are a, definitely a lot easier than they look like painting trees because it's all about using different techniques with your brush. Like right now I'm rolling my brush on the paper to get these, whoops, <laughs> I can fix that with water to get these, what? Some biscuits. <laughs> and some paper towel. To get these, um. A quick lesson on erasing watercolor. <laughs> yeah. To get these like flecks, really tiny leaf specks, you're just rolling your paintbrush around and it's just giving it that texture. Or you're grabbing lots of pigment on your brush and very little water and you're just kind of dabbing around. So a lot of people don't, aren't super familiar just with those basic techniques because they are newer to watercolor or they are used to painting a different way. So it's all about kind of trying different scrubbing and dappling effects with your brush and following that basic shape. John. Very nice. If I were a beginner painter painting along, I would feel a little bit more at ease. Well, that's good. I've got my darkest green. I'm just gonna spruce it right up on over here. Spruce, spruce it up. Mm -hmm. It's a type of tree. It is, and I'm going to be painting a spruce tree. There you go. I just want it to be a little bit more textured over here and fuller. So I'm kind of lightly tapping my brush, super dry brush, with just some sap green and Mars black. See, more techniques. This tree just had a bundle of techniques. Yes. Dead. Tap, 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 tap. Using the belly of the brush, not the tip. Okay, so there's your, um, what is this, oval shape. So I'm gonna do another trunk. Lighten the value, dry it off. There's little gaps of just paper showing through or white space. That's where I'm gonna throw in these really thin lines just using the tip of my brush and little to no pressure. So it's just very light. Tree number three, an oval shape. So we've got round shape, spreading, oval. Thank you so much for watching this part of a tree series that we have done on my channel. If you wanna see the full video or any of the other parts of these trees, we have a 10 watercolor tree shapes video that covers all 10 of these shapes. We just did a few of those 10 in this video. So if you wanna watch the full video, check it out here, or we have all of the different parts on a playlist that you can check out as well that we'll link in the video. 
And as always, thank you so much for watching our videos. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to our channel. All of the, that engagement really helps us boost this channel and share it with more people and help spread the love of watercolor. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.